Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're making a battery powered winch. Alright, so here's what we're starting with. This is an old 2500 pound ATV winch that I bought when I had a quad. Um, I just all I bought this for was to raise and lower a, um, a snow plow. Um, but to make something out of it, um, I bought a little winch plate. And then I bought this guy, which is a hitch adapter for an ATV. So my plan is to basically make this mount to the winch plate, attach this somehow, and then um, I can have a few ways of attaching it. So I'll either take this guy, drill a couple holes in there, and make an adapter so that this will go into this side, and then that can go into, you know, any sort of a receiver adapter. Um, this one's the one that I use on my workbench for holding tools. Um, but this means that I could then use the workbench to pull something in the garage. The other option would just be the fact that this has a big old loop on it and we can use that loop to attach it to something with a hook or even like a soft shackle or something. So that's kind of the plan. And to power it, um, we're going to use some DeWalt drill batteries. Um, somewhere I have a, uh, an adapter that lets me plug this into it and then uh, basically a little dock where I can plug this in and then it will feed power to the winch. Um, hopefully that works and doesn't burn anything out. Um, but uh, I also can't find that adapter right now, so I've got to go do a little bit more digging. But uh, I figured we can at least, you know, make progress and uh, make a start to this. So I'm going to start by just kind of piecing things together. So we've got our winch plate. itself and that's going to mount kind of in this sort of this sort of situation so then we kind of figure out where I've got room so what we're gonna do is probably just weld this. I wasn't really planning on welding it, but you know, that might just be the best option. And I was thinking about just kind of having it like this. So like we could have even had it, you know, bolt down like this. But wanting to keep that pulling force kind of in line, uh, I think what we'll actually do is line everything up like so. And we'll just run a, run a bead up top and then on the bottom and weld it right here. What I've come up with so far. I'm basically just raiding the scrap bin. Um, got this piece of, uh, I guess this is one inch angle iron, and uh, I'm going to stick that right there, give or take. Our control box can mount this side, and then um, whenever I find that battery tray, I'm going to mount it to this side, and uh, that should be pretty much all we need. So I'm going to just we're going to take a little, take the paint off of here, hold that up like so, and then um, again, weld it in. Alright guys, it's a new day. Um, got this guy mounted up. 
kind of everything mocked in place. I did find my battery dock and I've got a battery. <clears throat> now there are two issues with what I'm doing right here so you know be careful. One, um, this is all for a 12 volt and um, you might notice that that says 20 volts so I'm definitely going to be putting a little too much voltage to this box. So hopefully it doesn't actually blow up. Um, the reason it might be okay is that while this says 20 volts, um, this is actually like a nominal 18 volt setup. Um, <clears throat> in fact, in Europe, uh, they don't say 20 volt max, they actually just say 18 volt. Um, the other thing is that I've heard that if you uh, if you draw too much current, you can actually fry these batteries. Um, so I'm trying this out with this guy. This is an old 3 amp hour battery I've had forever. Um, it's basically dead. Um, there's very little charge left to it. And um, despite the fact that you stick it on the charger and it says full, it's got one bar. So <coughs> that that's kind of where I'm at as far as that goes. So uh, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's try it out and see if it works. Turn on my remote. And there's a little switch in here. Hopefully I don't let the smoke out. If I do, I got a fire extinguisher somewhere. All right, nothing's exploded. Was a success. Kill that. Pull this off. So yeah, we've got a, uh, a working drill-powered winch. So all I'm going to do now is uh, dismantle this, clean everything up, and uh, tidy up the wires. I left these guys long just in case. Um, I might still leave them long, just bunched up. Otherwise, I'll shorten them. Um, I did want to have this box flipped around, um, that way these guys would face here and then this would go right to there, but uh, these holes are a little offset and it's just going to work a little bit better if I route everything like so. So uh, yeah, like I said, just going to strip this down, clean it up, and then uh, throw some paint on it and assemble it for real. All right, there we go. Painted up and finished. Um, got this guy mounted a little bit better. Uh, shortened the cable and actually used some nice uh, heat shrink right there. Uh, that's the good stuff with the glue on it that really seals it, makes it watertight. Um, yeah. Also made, uh, drilled some holes in that piece of uh, two inch square tube. So now I've got a pin in there. So I can either hook some sort of hook into that, hook something onto the here, or take this whole thing and plug it into a trailer receiver hitch. And yes, I know I just put a screwdriver in there. I don't have another pin readily available. That, turn it on. We can, uh, you know, still got access to free spool on this guy. Pull that out. So yeah, there we go. Uh, portable little winch. Uh, great for small tasks, dragging stuff around the yard. 
Um, it'll also be good for putting stuff on a trailer. Or in my case, um, because I've got this mounted right here, I can actually use it to pull a dead car into the garage without having to push so hard. That's going to be it for today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Loading a car on a trailer, or in my case, um, now with this mounted here, I can pull cars into the garage. Um, or, like my...